Hello once again, it's time to warm up your brain cells and follow my twisted mind into the cosmic realm of plasma currents and magnetic fields. Because in my last movie I didn't even start to describe how magnetic reconnections affect the weather patterns on Earth, my initial plan was to continue the explanation of my homemade space weather model. But just like most of my greatest plans, this one will have to wait for better times. Some of you noticed probably the change which my channel went through since the beginning of my adventure with heliophysics more than three years ago. Of course, the main subjects of my research don't differ that much from things which I tried to explain in some of my first movies. It was for me a very long journey, on which I've learned about physics more than during 15 years of school education. Those who traveled on this path with me so many times how I used the new knowledge to prove things which I've guessed before and to fit them into my model. Maybe some of you remember that it was more than two years ago when I've managed to explain BX and BY reconnections which I was showing you in my last movie. Before however I didn't know how to read the data recorded by satellites and my claims were nothing more than a theory. It took me quite a lot of time to put the pieces together but now I know at last how to compare actual readings with SWMF simulation and finally prove things which I've guessed so long ago. It is just an example, as I went through such process many times in the past. But such progress of the entire research is rather a normal thing and it is not the subject about which I want to talk in this movie. In movies which I've made during the last year or so, I concentrated mostly on the instabilities of geomagnetic field and how they affect our climate. But those who followed my research from the very beginning know for sure that the actual reason why I started to record movies about space weather was different. The main goal which I wanted to achieve is much greater than to explain the climate changes on Earth. Most of you know for sure what I'm talking about. The reason why I started to learn about the space weather was to use all kinds of scientific data to prove once and for all the existence of Planet X. Although I didn't manage to find any visual proofs of a large and unknown celestial body in our neighborhood, I've pointed out many times the effects of its electromagnetic influence on the entire solar system. I've called this unknown electromagnetic field as low energy field, because according to my observations it is negatively charged towards the heliosphere. Negative charge means that the field contains much more electrons than protons. It means as well that it is draining the sun from its positive charge. This was one of the first things, if not the first one, which I figured out during my research. And just like before, after all those years, I wouldn't change anything in those claims today. However, in my early movies, in which I've made those statements for the first time, my knowledge about space weather was tiny and I didn't know how to read most of the monitors which I use today. Besides, lots of things which I've pointed out as the influence of low energy field was actually caused by a normal activity of the sun. That's why I've decided to come back to this subject and look at it armed with new data and things which I've learned since that time. And maybe this time I will manage to prove once and for all most of my pseudoscientific claims. To do it, I will look once again at two events which I think are the best proofs of the influence of an unknown force on the entire heliosphere. The magnetopause reversal during March 13, 2012 and similar event which took place during the famous Japan earthquake in March 11, 2011, almost exactly one year earlier. Both events were already discussed in my movies a couple years ago, but now I want to add a lot of additional data which I hope will give a better insight into those strange space weather activities. But before I start to deal with this subject, I would like to show you something rather disturbing. According to my crazy claims, heliosphere is being discharged by the low energy field. If I am correct, then after those three years during which I've made my movies, we should be able to see the change on the sun itself. I think that one of the best ways to prove my crazy claims is to compare the images of Sun from 2013 and 2016. Most of you saw probably this movie before, but I will play it anyway. On the screen we can see two animations of the Sun activity from the same period of time, 2014 till late 2015. 
made from images captured by two different satellites, SOHO and SDO. Side, this movie looks pretty normal and those of you who missed somehow this upload before might have problems to notice the changes which took place on the sun during this period of time. This is the main problem with processes which take place gradually. Single and violent events are for sure much easier to notice. But there is a very easy way to see how significant is the change which took place during those two years. And two years are like a blink of an eye from the astronomical point of view. This is how the sun looked like in the beginning of 2014. And this is the same sun almost two years later. Of course, I wouldn't be myself if I wouldn't check if such significant decrease in the brightness of sun isn't just an error of data or it wasn't caused by any technical issue. There are people who explain the darkening with something what is called camera deterioration or simply gradual decrease of image quality caused by the camera being exposed on extreme space conditions. This is why I would like to show you some additional data which will show clearly that the darkening sun has nothing to do with camera's malfunction. First, let's look at the images of Sun which were made by Stereo Ahead satellite. This one was made in January 2013. And this one is the most current one. I think that there is no need to comment it. Generally, if we start to compare images from different satellites and at different wavelengths, on the Helio viewer side, we shouldn't have any problems to see that the darkening of sun is a real deal and it will be very difficult for all professional scientists to find any it's not a problem explanations of this process. Another thing which proves the darkening of sun is the corona. Over the last three years its size and brightness was reduced by more than 50%. Notice as well that on those two stereo A images brightness of the surface is not affected that much as on other images. So it can be any kind of camera issue. I will now give some time for NASA scientists to figure out some interesting answers. In the meantime I would like to present my opinion. Of course, some of my viewers don't need to listen as I explained this process many times in the past since the very beginning of my space weather lessons. Although three years ago I was making a lot of mistakes in terminology and I couldn't explain it 100% correctly, but during that time I was consuming the knowledge like a cookie monster and after some time my explanations reached the level which is acceptable for any professional scientist. It's all about a problem which became one of the main subjects in my research, as it can be seen in both heliosphere and magnetosphere. I mean, of course, the outflow of plasma. More than three years ago, I started to build a space weather model 
which since its very beginning predicted the decrease of charged particles in solar system, due to the influence of low energy field. And right now I'm not sure if I should celebrate or if I should be frightened, as it seems that I was right. Octopus exists and its electromagnetic tentacles are wrapped now around our poor sun. And although the low energy field octopus is invisible itself, we can see clearly its visible influence on the environment. Just like on the sun, so on earth. Those two areas which I've marked are the points where a magnetic connection with low energy field causes the outlaw of energetic particles. In this case, the only important difference between those images is just the size of the electromagnetic tentacles. On the sun, flux tubes are a couple times larger than planet earth. This comparison allows me to move smoothly to the next part of this lesson. That means to talk a little bit about the magnetosphere. But I can't just wait to see what will be the reaction of deniers for my dying sun revelations. So I'll split the entire lesson into pieces. This is the end of part one. Have a nice doom.